r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. Teachers of reddit. What is the worst thing you've seen a parent do to their child that either made you want it or did make you call child protective services? <laughs> Couple years back I was running a preschool classroom in a low income area. Had a kid who would constantly come invisibly dirty. Usually always had a dirty diaper was almost 5. So we had a theory that she never really got a bath or change or anything. Changed her up before sending her home one day. And I had my behind distant drawl star on her diaper. Sure enough. Go to change her when she arrives the next morning. And there's the star on her diaper. She had been in the same soaked diaper for nearly 18 hours. That was smart to mark the diaper. This method gets used to check on elder care providers too. When I worked at a nursing home there was one night that the evening shift passive aggressively wrote the time of last change on each resident's brief. They weren't under any instruction to do it. They were just pissy that we told them that resident A had to be changed an extra time after they put them to bed because A would always be soaked through their brief. Pajamas. Underpads. And sheets in the 3 hours between their bedtime and the time night shift came in. I'm sorry, but you're supposed to check change every 2 hours to prevent skin breakdown. Why weren't they doing that? Not a teacher, but I was playing with some kids one time and one of them fell down because of the roots around this giant tree. She started crying immediately, but not because of the injury, but because her white shoes got scuffed. Her little brother hugged her really tight and kept saying he'd try to find a way to hide them when they got home so that mom didn't see them. The girl said she was going to get beaten up again. Told my mom. Mom called the police. Never saw the kids again. That is heartbreaking. I'm so happy you told your mom. And that your mom actually did something. I hope the kids are okay now. I hope this was a good ending. See. Pretty sure it means the police ate the kids. Had a student beaten so badly he couldn't sit in his chair. Entire back was covered in lashes. Admin gets the mom to come to the school and the cops are there waiting for her. They arrest her on the spot, while taking another child, an infant, out of her arms to do so. When they asked her why she did it her response was, because he needed it. She was so warped she couldn't even come up with an excuse. So sad. In her mind her action was perfectly justified so she didn't need an excuse to do so. The same shit probably happened to her as a child, not an excuse. Sad. I mean, if I was beaten as a child I wouldn't want my kids to go through the same experience. Freshman came in smelling like cat urine, which is a sign of meth cooking, especially in a rural school district. I told the nurse, nurse and principal pulled the student from class, never saw her again. The things we learn from Breaking Bad. This was pre-Breaking Bad, they once showed the teachers the map of the state with the number of meth raids by county. Most counties had 3 7, one county had 25, the county we were in had 76. Missouri? One of my preschoolers parents sent him in the same socks over and over and he had so much earwax and hung that it smelled. I told my boss and went out to buy him some socks. Since we were playing with water I just acted like he accidentally got his socks wet and put another pair on him and sent them both home. You bet your bottom dollar he was wearing the same socks I just gave him the next day. People who treat their children like that need to go to Guantanamo Bay. It makes me so angry. The parents might be poor or homeless and not have a choice. In my experience, the parents can always buy cigarettes. Though, I have snuck socks and underwear and several backpacks. The kids were embarrassed, so I got stealthy, and in every case, the parents have shown up to school with visible packs of cigarettes, or tried to smoke them. That's some serious money literally blown away. <laughs> had one particular year where we had a bunch of students who had terrible home lives. Roaches coming out of book bags, dirty clothes, etc. One parent teacher conference the parent was clearly on pills and kept talking about what a terrible child she had. But the kid wasn't bad at all. They just had low grades because they missed so much school. That summer their house burned down and their brother was arrested for making child O. Another set of parents came in that year with a toddler wearing only a diaper and they were all really dirty. Like they hadn't bathed in a week. The child always looked clean at school though. Which made me think they cleaned up in the bathroom before school. Wait, their brother was arrested for making child O? WTH. Distribution of child O. So that's what we're behind doomed. 
That's not always what you think it is though. There have been men a teenage boys who have been charged with distribution of child o for sending d pics of themselves to another person. They get railroaded because the court systems cannot differentiate due to extremely archaic and counterproductive rules regulations laws. And because of how biased courts are against anything involving men and a sex offense like child o. It's extremely sad too because it means their lives are ruined since they will be labeled as a sex offender forever which makes doing anything almost impossible. People just bet and doom the worst because as soon as they hear child o or sex offender they think the person is ultra evil when in reality they might actually just be a victim of some really shitty courts whose goal seemingly was only to destroy kids lives. Outside of school. But I once called 911 for an infant that was left in a hot car in the sun with all doors and windows closed and locked. You should have seen the cop yelling at the mother when she got back to her car. In Arizona, my state, it's legal to break the window and save the child. Thankfully I've never had to do it, but one of my best friends had to. The baby was passing out, and had a reverse fever of 76. The baby made it, and he adopted her, after the parents lost custody. That's so nice. How are they now? They moved to Washington a few weeks ago. The girl has no lasting effects. So that's good. And he is settling down with his girlfriend. Waiting for the time to propose. I helped him pick out the ring the day before he left. My friend is a special ed teacher for the really bad cases. She's trying to get out of it. Because it's basically killing her. A lot of the kids that are in her classes are there because of the horrible things that have been done to them. One pair of sisters, maybe 6 and 8, came from an Eastern European orphanage where they were molested. Luckily, they got adopted by an American couple, so they got to start a new life together. Then their new dad started molesting them. She calls CPS a lot. Then their new dad started molesting them. Jesus Christ. She calls CPS and nothing happens? She calls CPS. They take the kids away. And next week she gets new kids with new problems in her class. Not a teacher. Father is though. A teacher in the school had two boys. Both in high school. She had some mental issues and had to take a few weeks off. The older child came in smelling horrible a few days in a row. And the teacher pulled him aside and asked if everything was alright. He said. And I shit you not. Mom hasn't been around to give me a bath. Like it wasn't a big deal at all. Kid is 16 and his mother gives him bath like you would a 3 year old. When they brought his brother, 15, in to talk to him about his home life. He confirmed this. Not 4 hours later CPS entered the home and removed them. Teacher is still employed. Teacher is still employed. I'm sorry. WTF. I will lead with I'm not a teacher. However, I have had to report to CPS. A sweet 14 year old joined the server I'm in on Discord. I also happen to be a moderator and immediately we couldn't help but find her to be a refreshing change in company. She's passionate about animals. Bright. Basically teaching herself as her mom is doing her best but still struggling and she's at home. But the more she talked about her mom, the more alarmed our mod team got. She was jaundiced. Losing weight no matter what she ate. Had constant stomach pain. And despite all those alarming symptoms, her mom refused to even take her to a GP. Her mother would scream at her if she asked for help with school things. She was severely stunted in education. And she was regularly told she was useless and couldn't do anything. The last straw was when she finally admitted there was physical abuse as we suspected. Including a chair being thrown at her head. Despite most of us being under 25 and struggling ourselves. We refused to leave a kid unsupervised in that position. After a long, serious conversation about what the symptoms in her health could mean. The escalation in physical abuse and the obvious but in distance her mom needed. I got the necessary information for the CPS report and filed it immediately. In two days, the agents arrived. Behind us the situation. And were able to get some sense into the mother. The 14 year old is now getting help with school. Going to a specialist children's hospital. And the mom is working to get her own issues under control with aid while CPS makes sure everything is going right. Sometimes the solution isn't remove the kid. Sometimes it's behind us the parent. Abuse is always abuse. But it isn't always intentional. When it isn't intentional. It often alarms the parent to realize what they've done. As a child from that situation. With loving but also abusive parents who didn't know better. 
I have been determined to help others in that situation. You really did a great thing. This girl and probably even her mother will thank you and remember what you did for their whole lives and it's amazing. As someone who for the short time I was on Discord as a teen had a horrible experience with adults, I'm glad people like you exist. I don't know if this counts but I called the CPS for my sisters and I. My sisters and I were regularly beaten for failing any tests. We were sat at a desk and when we didn't answer a question right we were punched. Pair pulled. Face slammed into the desk and pinched. Our parents beat us really often and sometimes for no reason. Once I was sweeping when she told me to and I was scared cause she was going one by one to each of my sisters to beat them and I heard the screaming get closer. I got frantic and stopped cause the beating was inevitable. She just started kicking when she pushed me to the floor. The breaking point was when she tried to drown my sister in the bathtub. I told my counselor, who wrote down the report completely of everything. I desperately asked to go into foster care. Months later about 6-7 months. A woman came to talk to me. They told me to go to the front and the receptionist whispered. Your caseworker is in the room to the right. CPS interviewed me and her face was in shock. She apologized for taking so long and said we go to those who can't speak for themselves first. Then she made one home visit. My sisters were too scared to say anything and I told her please don't give up they're too scared to say anything because my parents are listening in the other room. She nodded and left. Again months later I came home from a friend's and my mom said CPS gave her an entire copy of the report I gave to them. I've never seen her more angry. I thought she was bluffing and said no I didn't. Then she said the date, time, and what I said in the report. I told my counselor and she said well I called CPS and they said they didn't do that. So yeah, the abuse just went on. To this day it my stomach curdle at the thought of why and how CPS could just do nothing. Just one home visit and gone. I am so sorry CPS failed you. I hope you are in a better place now. I'd like to say yes, but no. Therapy. Lots of it. For lots of problems as a result. With parents taking no responsibility and calling us failures and told us she doesn't regret beating us. But I have a big dream. I plan on one day making my own video game. I was bullied by teachers and students, then got home to be bullied by parents. But I always went back to my fantasy world. I made so many characters I strive to be a concept artist and video game designer one day. Right now I can't say yes but in the future I hope I can make a fantasy world one day another kid can go to to be happy. I have a lot to thank the Legend of Zelda 4, and one of them being my biggest escape. My next goal, art school, colon. I hope you succeed and become a famous video game designer. The world should at least give you that after what you had to go though. Good luck to you. Not a teacher, but I work in student support in a high school. We frequently put in child protection reports. The worst one was a 14 year old girl living with her baby sister, mentally ill mum, and violent dad. Dad and mum get high on meth. Dad beats mum. Dad rapes girl. Dad gets girl pregnant and punches her in the stomach until the baby dies. Girl denies anything is happening at home because she thinks if she is removed, she can't protect her baby sister anymore. Dad ended up in jail. Jesus Christ. Thank fuck the rapist ended up in jail. He should just die. What a waste of oxygen. Oh dying is a lot easier than being in jail as a rapist trust me. A teacher said to me once that she would adopt me if I ever wanted to run away from home. I don't think she was kidding. Matilda? Nice try Mrs. Wormwood. That's kinda sweet. Not as serious as other stories but my aunt works with a lot of immigrant children. Usually grade 1-3. And she said she had noticed a student being very tired every day and not doing any homework so the next time she met with the parents she asked them if he is getting enough sleep or what he does at home. The parents tell my aunt that they make him help in the kitchen of their restaurant every evening after school and they usually get home at around 1am. My aunt was very angry and tried explaining that he can't be working at such a young age and until so late because he had schoolwork to do and it was affecting his grades. Aunt also reported it to the principal but I have no idea if it got to the point of calling CPS about it. I think it's really sad that kids especially this young have to work in this world. My family has a rather big house with respective personal grounds. I'm 17 I don't have a problem with helping. 
but until 1am would even be too much for me. This is pretty common. Especially among immigrant families who have a higher likelihood of being part of a smaller, family owned business, daycare, restaurant, car wash, etc. I have several students in my school who work for several hours after school elementary, who then get home and have to do homework and get up and go to school the next day. This obviously isn't best practice when it comes to parenting. But they are often coming from different cultures backgrounds expectations and it's just the way things are for some of them. Had a friend in high school whose mom refused to buy her toiletries clothes food she had to work and pay for it all herself and also wouldn't pay for her school lunches. The friend had two little brothers who were spoiled heavily and the mom wore two giant buttons of the boys on her clothes everywhere. But treated the friend like the plague. I visited her house once. Which was fairly new. And the counters were covered in old bushes and there was pet fesses everywhere. They had three large dogs and multiple cats. All indoor pets. Thankfully our school got involved and she got emancipated from them at 17. She kept in contact with her dad. Who was mostly under the mom's thumb but never did anything bad toward her. He allowed her to be treated badly by her mother. Do not allow that enabler the honor of being considered anything but a neglectful, abusive excuse for a parent. Did my first CPS report on a student this year. She's a very emotional child and I noticed something was up immediately when she started acting out in class. She opened up to me at recess one day, saying that her parents fight all the time. They scream and yell and hit each other and it makes her sad. She said that one night, dad was about to hit mom and she didn't want him to so she got in the way to stop him and he ended up hitting her in the mouth instead. What's crazy is that her stories were so similar to what I went through as a kid. My parents would always have these ugly fights where they would scream and throw things at each other and my mom would end up physically attacking my dad, among other things like pull a knife out in front of us and threaten. It's crazy to look back and think that if I would have confided in my teacher or counselor about all of that, they would have reported my parents to CPS. I never thought that till my student confided in me about her own family issues. It's crazy to look back and think that if I would have confided in my teacher or counselor about all of that, they would have reported my parents to CPS. Maybe. Maybe not. Recognition of abuse has changed a lot over the years. As a child of the 80s who had bones broken by a parent, the doctor I saw didn't even bother to report it. I'm friends with some teachers. One family literally lived in a cave. They did periodic welfare checks but the kids were fed cleaned and clothed well enough and they were sheltered so that was that as I understand. The parents have never been found to be on drugs or anything. They were just so poor that they lived in a rocking cave. This is in rural Appalachia in the US. Which even my husband, who does home health, always has at least one patient with dirt floors and half caved in roofs. Working in home health really makes you hyper aware that your version of messy dirty is never as bad as someone else's version of it. That's not that bad. That would actually be kinda cool if it has furniture and stuff. They were taken care of physically. Which means the parents definitely love them but are just really poor. Houses are just man made. Above ground caves. Not me. But my mom. This kid was acting up at school mostly kinjit and stuff. And when his parents found out. They would lock him in a closet and literally slide trays of food under a slot in the door. It was like the kid was in prison. You might think. Whoa. Severe timeout. But this kid missed school for 3 days because he was in the closet. It gets worse. He told his teachers why he was gone. So they called DCFS to handle the situation. The parents find out and buy a tarantula. You know where this is going. They let the tarantula bite the kid and send him off to school with a big behind spider bite on his hand. I saw him a couple weeks later and the nurse had wrapped it in gauze because of how bad it had gotten. What. The. Actual. Uck. This is the worst tucking thing I've ever read. You know where this is going. Oh, uh, no. No RMAL people don't go there. And I wasn't prepared. Oh my god. I'm sorry. It's just horrific. It's a child. And it's your child. It just boggles the mind. You go through the trouble of creating a sentient being and then proceed to put it through systematic torture during its formative years like it's not going to absorb information and experience life through this ucked up lens you've provided it. Some people just shouldn't be allowed to exist. 
I've written about this before so I'm just going to copy paste my answer because I am not in the right mindset today to actually relive it through words. About 5 years ago in my 10th grade English class, one of the best students I've ever had the honor of teaching, came to class horribly beaten up. He was over an hour early and just slowly walked to his seat and sat there quietly. I sat next to him begging him to tell me what happened. He did, but I wish he hadn't. His dad found out that my student was gay, and decided that no son zero F is would be, or could be, gay. So he decided to beat the gayness out of him. He beat him to a pulp, two black eyes, a broken nose, broken ribs, and numerous cuts and bruises. When he was done beating him, he ripped my student's clothes off and put a meat cleaver on the table and made him watch Gayo naked in order to make sure that he wouldn't get a hard on. He told him if he got hard, he would chop his end off. I didn't let him finish. I didn't want to know what else he had endured. I called the cops. An ambulance was sent for my student. They found the dad at work. He was an elementary school teacher, teaching his class like it was just another normal Monday. Glad to say my student made a full recovery. B, along with his mom and siblings, spend all the holidays with us. Thank you for what you did, and continue to do for this boy, and kudos to the Spitfire mom. I'm so glad this has a happy ending. It's so hard seeing other LGBTQ children go through stuff like this and never get help. It makes me so angry when parents think that being gay is something that someone chooses to do B. By law, if a teacher thinks they need to call CPS, they call CPS. Every time anything happens, they are supposed to make that call. It's a part of being what's called a mandatory reporter. A person in direct child care who has an immediate responsibility for the child. And you can call. 2. Impartial information from the community helps cases move forward to towards a good solution. And it's always anonymous. Toll free. Even. Save the number for your state in your phone. It might save a kid's life. Ducking like and subscribe.